Uh oh. I'm gonna piss some people off. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is the latest film directed by Quentin Tarantino, his ninth film that the posters and the trailers wouldn't shut up about. The first thing I will say is this is the least Tarantino film that Tarantino has ever made. One being that it's the cleanest movie I think he's ever made. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in terms of the last films, few films he's made, this movie is super clean in comparison. It is super non-risky in terms of what it's showing, what it's talking about, as well as the language. The F word is used so little in this movie that I almost have to keep reminding myself it was a Quentin Tarantino movie. I feel that this is his homage to the idea in the lifestyle of the late 60s, early 70s, because that's all the movie's about. When you come down to bare bones basics of what this movie is about, it's about nothing. I remember seeing a lot of comments about the trailers that were being released for the film saying, yeah, this is a good trailer. It doesn't tell anything about the story and it keeps you interested, which it did. But there's a reason why, because there is no story. Yes, there are events that happen through the film, but if you were to ask me what the plot is, this is it. Leo's an actor, Brad's a stuntman. Leo's kind of down on his luck, Brad's not really getting much work. Leo does a few western movies while Brad drives around in his car. Brad hangs out with some hippie chicks and finds Charlie Manson's compound, walks in, beats up a dude, and then walks out. Whereas Leo is struggling with acting, and in the end he decides to go to Italy which they skim over in about a few minutes. They come back and then they just so happen to be there on the night that the Sharon Tate murders happen. That is the movie. But when I say it to you like that, doesn't that sound fucking boring? I will say, of course, that the acting in this movie is very good. Leonardo DiCaprio is really good. Brad Pitt's really good. Everyone that just makes a surprise cameo in this movie, there's a lot of them. And I'm not just talking about the ones that aren't credited. I'm talking about the ones who are. Dakota Fanning's in this for four, maybe four minutes. Bruce Dern is in this movie for two minutes and he's credited. This movie has a ton of moments where the main characters will come across a character who is a pretty well-known actor and then they never come back again. It moves on from a different pointless interaction to a different pointless interaction. Obviously the dialogue is funny. Obviously there's some witty humor and there's some witty lines. But when all you have is your characters talking with each other about nothing and then we're watching other guys watch movies that they've made, all you're doing is just establishing that yes, these movies happen, this lifestyle happened, this is what the time and base of this film is. I'll give the set deck and the setting amazing credit. This movie makes you feel like you're in the 60s. Everything down from the music, which is fantastic, to the advertisements, to the buildings, to the cars, to how open it was to drive in Los Angeles at the time. When it comes to detail, Tarantino does it really well in this movie, but it seems like he put all of his effort into that. At first it's interesting for maybe a half hour, but then when you realize you're watching the same thing for the next hour, there's a scene that feigns itself as something suspenseful, and that was when I was like, oh, and then it's over, and then you're back to boredom again until the end, which honestly feels like such a slapped on ending. Hey, I did this in one of my movies before, I'll do it again because people like that. It feels so tacked on to the end that it feels like it had to be put in there because at the point there was no rising action, there was no downfall, there was no basic film story structure. Nothing happened in this movie that made you invested in the plot because there was nothing there and nothing made you really care about the characters other than who they were which yes they're cool characters but when their motivations are non-existent and their primary purpose is so infinitely little that I have to search for reasons to care about these characters I'm not exactly entertained. I checked my watch so often during this movie I didn't really get into this movie and when the film was over my roommate and I both sat there and said what did we just watch? You want another example of pointlessness? Sharon Tate played by Margot Robbie is in this movie. For the majority of the movie the only connection that they have 
is that he knows that she lives next to him. There's kind of this interesting scene where she goes to the movie theater and watches a movie of herself, which Tarantino respectfully has the actual Sharon Tate up on the screen instead of something imposed, which they did do with a few things for Rick Dalton, which were pretty impressive. I think this is the most visual effect that he's ever put into a movie. It doesn't serve anything. If you were going to make a movie about Sharon Tate as a biography, why don't you just make a whole movie about Sharon Tate? Why did you put her into this story about these two guys and they don't do anything and she doesn't do anything and you don't go anywhere with either of them and something else that I will admit I was expecting a lot more from Brad and Leo in terms of their interaction anytime that they do have interactions on screen it's great it's really good but when you think about it, the amount of screen time that they're together is pretty small considering this is the first time these two have ever been in a movie together. For in this movie, they are hanging out a lot, but they don't do much. There's not much to it. So really, in the end, I feel that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is just Quentin making a really easy movie. I thought that Hateful Eight was him kind of just going with emotions considering he almost didn't want to make the movie because of the script leak but this one feels lazy obviously not set deck and setting wise but just in terms of story i know some of you are going to be like oh well, well the character development and all the interactions are all really good yeah sure but you need to have a point there needs to be a point to this and there needs to be a point of me wanting to see these characters go about their lives aside from just who they are i want to see what they're doing they drop this huge bomb about brad pitt's character's past and then they don't do anything with it. there was this tiny little snippet but that's it and to, considering how much they bring it up and how big of a bombshell it is you would think that they would do more than absolutely almost nothing and probably the one thing that does get me a little bit is the, using the moniker once upon a time considering that quentin tarantino's movies are basically giant homages to other people's works of the past and huge pieces of cinema that most people have forgotten are just relics. The fact that he's using the Once Upon a Time moniker, which incurs with Once Upon a Time in the West and Once Upon a Time in America, both by Sergio Leone, this movie is pitiful in comparison to those two, considering the moniker. So in the end, I did enjoy the interactions between Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. I did enjoy the visual style of the film in terms of its setting and its set deck. And I thought there were some funny parts, but overall, this is probably the most pointless Quentin Tarantino movie he's ever made so in the end and i know i'm gonna piss y'all off i'm gonna give once upon a time in hollywood a two out of seven i would never care to watch this again i feel like i wasted my time I'm not saying that number is because it's a bad movie in terms of how it was made it's just pointless it is so pointless but that is obviously my opinion i know some of y'all are gonna disagree with me and i accept that and I'm interested to see what you guys have in terms of a counter to what I've said. My favorite movies by Tarantino for the record are Django Unchained and True Romance. I know he didn't direct it, but he wrote it. Funny enough, because Django Unchained is his longest movie, but that movie actually moves the plot along better than most of his other films, in my opinion. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Don't kill me, for those of you who are Tarantino fans. And I hope to see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching the video. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say The Click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <sniffs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.